exit bay as one of the most narrow entrances and exits that I've ever seen in my life. Now actually was fine, but coming in here, that was scary. Now on the way to glass window, and uh, it's eight miles. Let's put up the sails. Glass window bridge, boat is over there, gonna do a short explore and then continue because we wanna go through the next pass at low tide. That's how we're gonna go. So apparently the road used to go here, but a storm lifted up the whole bridge and relocated it. And then they had to adjust it and now it's in a curve. We're leaving Glass Window Bridge now and on the way to this pass. Uh, it's only about two hours, we need to plan it well, because we need to go through at either high tide or low tide. go as planned. I thought let's just not use the engine just put the main up uh, but then there's actually quite a lot of wind so I put the main down again and uh, continue with the jib. Well I still did not put the engine up so I guess that's uh, that's one step forward. <laughs> Catamaran is about a mile in front of me. They're at the entrance of the cut now and they say the current is too strong. So we're going one and a half mile further on this side to an anchorage and then we're going through the cut later. I anchored here another boat that just went through, uh, sorry, from the other direction and said it was a four knot current with him, meaning a four knot current against us right now. Uh, they could do it if they put both engines on. <laughs> me with my 20 horsepower engine would be uh, not so fun. Maybe possible, maybe not. So gonna wait two or three hours till the till the current has changed and then go through.
became a little uncomfortable after going through the pass and I'm not going to make it anymore to where originally planned to, uh, to spend the night so I'm actually close hauling and have the motor on because one hour 15 minutes and it's dark and arriving in the night at a new place is never a good idea so let's see if we can at least make it to this anchorage that's the closest by anchorage that's at least still protected Good news, made it before dark. Nice. It's just uh, the way here all day was like five, six knots average, and then you know went through the through the pass, and then it dropped to like two knots or something. I wasn't expecting that, but uh, oh well, whatever. What a beautiful sunset, huh? Wow. Today we ended up at uh, different places because you know I just couldn't I couldn't make it and they were already halfway at the other one. So we'll meet up tomorrow again. Good morning. I'm leaving really really early. Uh, the wind's going to be more and more on the nose later on. So I just want to do the, those five miles to meet up with the catamaran before the wind starts picking up. As you see now the waves and everything is still really calm. Reggie is making breakfast. Reggie, what are we having? We're having eggs and Edam cheese and bacon. Ah, oh, that looks awesome. I know somebody was a little jealous right now. <laughs> You'll get a little piece later, don't worry. We're gonna walk around Spanish Wells, the town, just to see if there's something interesting to see. Apparently it's just one circle. We're in a golf cart if you want. We are going to rent a golf cart, or actually, they are going to rent a golf cart, and I'm going to join. All right, apparently this is our golf cart, let's go. Fantastic, isn't it? All these golf carts. We're going out for dinner at the shipyard restaurant. And uh, thank you guys very much. I know soon I'll go have to go back to peanut butter and um, and uh, rice and beans again and uh, canned vegetable. And the only thing I haven't been this much in the amount of time we went out for dinner is um, the same amount of time I've been out for dinner the last seven years. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Starters, this is fish, cheese dip, and what's this? Shrimp. Shrimp. To exit the channel, it's 
very shallow and you need to go in between a bunch of uh, coral heads. Now the theory is that you should do it in daylight and normally with two people, so one is standing on the bow, the front of the boat, and um, will actually point like, hey, go a little bit more in that direction, go a little bit more in, that, in the other direction. That's the theory, but then when you're alone, the next stop is 51 miles, and so when you have a small boat, like I have, you need all the time, all the time you can get in a day to do 51 miles, and uh, it means you have to leave at the crack of dawn, and then you can see the coral hats, but when you're solo, you won't be able to see them anyway, because uh, you cannot steer and stand on the bow to look at it. So you have to take a leap of faith and, you know, trust your navigation, which I think in the Bahamas will be pretty accurate because there's so many people here, and just purely navigate on, on the line that's on the navigation. Uh, it's always, uh, I find that my heart rate goes up and uh, I feel really nervous and I'm really happy when I'm out of it. So let's sail now to the Abacos. It's a beautiful day, it's a bit rolly. I'm debating to put the main up or not. Uh, at the moment with the speed it's not really necessary. I just put the main up, normally I'd film it, but then the GoPro battery was dead. Take the main down, it's been a pretty... Uh, yeah, it's been a ride. It was too much wind. It was very uncomfortable taking the main down. Wish I put it on camera, but I hadn't. I reefed the main now, and uh, yeah, gotta keep making some speed because I uh, still gotta arrive before dark. And even if I'd arrive in dark, the weather is getting worse after six. So uh, yeah, I was expecting it to be a little. Calmer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're having a bulkhead issue, so they're not going to take the risk by keeping the, the seal up. <laughs> oh my god, it's one of these days. <laughs> The catamaran told me it's gusting 25 knots, which I would have known if I had a wind indicator, which I don't. Uh, Sometimes in this weather, when the autopilot is set and the boat is going, the boat can really handle itself well, and it's been doing it for the last hour. Just gonna sit inside and watch a movie. However, there are two boats coming in my direction, there and there, so I'll wait for that, and after that, watch a Netflix series or something. I'm sitting on the uh, kitchen, literally on the kitchen, uh, watching uh, some Netflix, waiting for the boats to pass by. It's funny because uh, normally you would never sit in a location like this, but on a boat, when it's healing over in a certain way, is you sometimes just find these strange positions that are at that moment actually the most comfortable.
Now I have to get from deep water into shallow water again, which is always a bit tricky. I arrived, dropped anchor, had a few bites to eat and went to bed. Kenamran, Yeroen and Reggie are going to do another 40 miles inside the bank today to Green Turtle Cay. There they have a lot of friends, they're going to stay there for a while and they're going to wait there until they get green light to go to the States to fix their bulkhead problem. This is also where we're going to split up. Um, I'm going to wait for parts here that I really need and then uh, I'm going to continue alone. I'm going to do a long day of hand steering because there's so many curves and my outer part it takes forever to... You've seen it, I have to walk inside the boat to turn it on and off. Um, yeah. And we're on the way. I did not even uh, start the engine. I'm putting up the anchor. Nice. And this is gonna be interesting. I'm close to this really narrow pass. He has red, right, green, left. And behind me is a big ship that is gonna overtake me somewhere around the pass. It's uh, this pass over here, you see red, right, green, left. That's pretty narrow. I have decided to do this the smart way. I'm just gonna wait here until he passes. Why would I take the risk? It's just stupid. Of course, the uh, most shallow part is only a really short part, is where I'm gonna pass two other boaters. Number one. Top. <laughs> Top. <laughs> doing every single sailing setup possible with all these curves. After this, we're still getting a tricky part, which is here, uh, going into the ocean and then back through the reefs. So that will be a bit rolly for sure. Just arrived, that was quite a fun trip. 